Hey guys, Dr. Deuce back again with another great music tech tip for you. Now today we're going to be looking at creating those really fast choppy hi-hat patterns that you get in trap, R&B, hip-hop, dubstep and those contemporary urban styles. Okay, there are a number of different ways you can do it, but specifically in Logic Pro X, we can use the arpeggiator to create those great sounding hi-hats. So let's get started on creating those hi-hat patterns. Now here's a quick 8-bar loop that I created just to give you an idea. Notice the tempo is set to 138, okay? Check it out. Okay, so this time I'm just going to play the hi-hat parts so you can hear what's going on with them. I'll put the metronome on. Okay, so let me break down what's going on. We've got the core elements, which is your 808 bass, some kicks, snares, claps, and so on. And then we come to the hi-hat parts. Now this first one here, let me solo this so you can hear what's happening here and play that back. So on this channel we've got an EXS24 sampler instrument with some hi-hat samples loaded. They're just single hits. But what we've got as well is the arpeggiator loaded which is this. Now to load up your arpeggiator all you've got to do on an empty track let's go back to default. Now this is what the default track will look like. You go here, you click arpeggiator and you get this window. Now there are a range of things you can use the arpeggiator for, not just for hi-hats but also for creating musical patterns. In this instant we're just using it to trigger the hi-hat. Now I'm going to load up the musical typing window. Now if I bypass the arpeggiator for the time being, thereby disabling it, and I was to press F on the keyboard, I'm just doing single hits. When I press the F key, this is what's triggered. Okay? However, if I switch the arpeggiator back on, and all I need to do now is press and hold F, I'm now going to press G to see what's, see what's on there. The arpeggiator is re-triggering each note I press at a rate of 1 16th, okay? So I'm now going to input a pattern over what we've got already, okay? Let's try this. slightly out of time at the end, but it's easy. Just hit Q to quantize, and now everything's on point. Okay, so let's listen back to that and see where each note has landed. Okay, good. So that's at 1 16th resolution, okay. Now, I can easily go in here and change this to, say, 1 over 32. Let's try that. Let's see what comes up. Of course, you can use the dial or you can use the drop-down list. Okay, let's try that. Cool. Now, what I want to do is let's shorten this slightly and shorten this. And I'm going to shorten this one to here. Okay, now let's try it at a different resolution. Okay, this time I'm going to go and I'm going to go for a dotted eighth. Let's try that. Okay, again, I'm on the same pattern that I inputted earlier. And all I'm doing is changing the resolution, changing the rate of repeat. So, let's have a listen. Ok, 
Okay, so these ones are going to require a bit more length. So let's drag these out a little bit, see what happens. I think you can already see how quickly you can come up with some really interesting patterns. Okay, so let me go back to what I had originally. Now this time I'll show you what's happening with each individual hi-hat part so it makes a bit more sense. So the first thing I've got to do is reset the rates to 1 over 16. Okay, 1 16th. Okay, so let's have a quick listen and see what's happening with this one. And then let's go to the 1 over 8, adding this in. And again, don't forget the resolution here is a, a dotted eighth note. Okay, at 130 BPM, remember? Okay, and finally, let's see. Yep, we've got two more. And this one, which is uh, uh, 1 over 32. Um, let's go for that one and open it up. Okay, cool. And finally here, this last one. So what I've done with this one, however, is something slightly different. And if we go in here, of course, we've got re the resolution is set to uh, 1 over 64. And however, what I've got is three different hi-hat sounds playing one after the other. That one, that one, now they're not just different pitches, they're actually different samples, okay? But they're coming in at a slightly different time. So if I was to play back the second half of this piece, okay, quite a nice little flurry at the end there where you feel the pitch is going down and it adds a bit of urgency going back into the beginning of the loop. Just one more time. Okay, so I hope that all makes sense. The arpeggiator in Logic Pro X is a fantastic tool, not just for hi-hat patterns, but for a whole range of things. And I'll be creating some more tutorials on how to make some really musical patterns with the arpeggiator in upcoming videos. Once again, this is Dr. Deuce. Great having you on board, and I'll be back again real soon. Peace.